Greetings, 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 royal family. I am back. I'm back. Oh, it has been a long, long, long time. For those of you who are new here, hi, my name is Royal B. This is the royal family to my A1 day ones. What's up? It's been a long, long time. A lot has been going on. Oh, I hope your morning is going well so far. Afternoon, whatever time of day you are watching this. It is Wednesday, April 28th. The year is 2021. It's Taurus season. Shout out to all of my Tauruses. Yeah, it's been a long time, y'all. It's good to be back. I might be a little rusty, but that's all right. That's all right. Drop down in the chat. Say hello, hello, hello. Thumbs up the video. Nothing has changed. That is your admission fee. If you are on Twitch, I'm live, live, live on Twitch. And YouTube is going to get the pre-recorded video. It's all good. Make sure you follow me on Twitch. If you're not, she underscore Royal B, just like the YouTube channel name. So I know I missed a lot. You know, all is well. You know what I mean? Nothing to worry about. Shout out to my royal family members who have been hitting me up in the DMs, keeping me abreast of all of the shenanigans that's been going on socially. Uh, some of you who have been keeping up with my community tab in YouTube, you know, I post on Instagram, post on the community feed in YouTube, just haven't been uploading any videos, but I'm back from my mini vacation. Okay. Cause there's a lot going on that I want to discuss. Now, for those of you who are new, please keep in mind, I don't break stories over here. I talk about what I want when I want. Okay. So something could have happened a month ago, two weeks ago. I want to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. Okay. All right. Just to let you know. Okay. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. Um, I'm not going to bombard you with too many topics, okay? Um, I am going to try to keep it current. You know, I have my little list here. It's a whole lot going on in Florida. It's a lot going on socially. Uh, the panini is still bussing, bussing, as the kids say. That's how I go, right? Bussing, bussing. I got my iced coffee, so you know I'm going to talk fast and get tongue-tied. Um... It's just a lot going on. You know what I mean? A couple of people went home to the upper room. You know, it's just a lot. So hopefully everybody's mental health is intact. And if I could provide you with a little bit of comic relief, a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of fun relief. I'm glad to do so. All right. So let's not waste any more time. Let me just get right into it. Let's start off with shenanigans as we often do. So I reposted this. This is from the Savoy Show on Instagram. I reposted their post. A Florida woman bites a little chunk out of her Uber driver's neck from the back seat. Now, listen, if you know about Florida, you know nothing, nothing is out of the realm of crazy for Florida. Okay? So this 55-year-old mutant, right? That's what I like to call her, was riding in the back seat. She was inebriated, okay, authorities uh, reported. And she was getting aggressive with her Uber driver. She started to choke him with her two hands, then she choked him with her arm. She scooted up to the front seat and strong-armed him and took a bite out of his neck. If you can see the picture, I'm not playing the video. You can, you're pretty sure you've probably seen the video or you can look it up online. I'm not going to play it. But if you look, you see his hands are up. He actually pulled over, and other people were witnessing this. Some people recorded it. Um, he went to go call 911. She smacked the phone out his hand. You see his hands are up. He did not defend himself. <laughs> I don't even understand why. I don't, I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't want to put his hands and feet on anybody. But I'm going to tell you something right now. I would have dog walked this lady. And I will hope that they will get it on camera. As a reminder to the other mutants, keep your hands to yourself. Now, I don't know what she was sipping on because she was intoxicated. I don't know. Some of you Henny drinkers do be wilding. So was she on that brown yak? I don't care what she was on. This is out of order. And she was safely, safely taken into custody. She bit a chunk out of this man's neck and safely made it into custody. If you know what I'm saying, isn't this interesting? She obviously was a threat to this Uber driver and other people. What kind of what kind of human being goes around biting people? When the Mike Tyson is going on, 
This disturbed me, and I could say a lot more, but I won't. So drop down in the comments and let me know if you heard about this, if you if you saw this story, if you even saw the video. It was wild crazy. All right, up next. <laughs> Robinette got a message for y'all. Who the heck is Robinette? That is y'all president. So Robinette posted to his Instagram that fully vaxxed folks can go outdoors without a mask. So his post reads, because of the extraordinary progress we've made in light in the fight, excuse me, in the fight against the, you, you know, the, the, the Coco, the Coro, the CDC made a big announcement today. If you are fully vaxxed and if you are outdoors and not in a large crowd, you no longer need to wear a mask. I'm extremely confused because weren't people not wearing masks outside? Like I get, well, it does say if you're in a big crowd. What do you guys think about this? First of all, did you get the, did you get the, you know, did you get poked? Drop that in the comments, you know, and let me know if you got poked. If so, why? If not, why not? No judgment here. This is a judgment free zone, but let me know if you got poked or not. Now, how are you going to determine if someone was poked or not? There is a card that you have to walk around with showing that you got poked. Were you wearing masks outside? Like when you go outside for a run or for a walk, were you wearing masks outside? Again, this is a judgment-free zone. <sighs> Drop down in the comments and let me know what you think. All right, speaking of getting poked, I thought that this was extremely interesting. So the, um, the CEO of Johnson and Johnson, the manufacturer of the, uh, of the vac vaccine, he sold $10 million of the company's stock before the contamination scandal. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you know that the, um, the vaccines for J and J for Johnson and Johnson, there was a recall, if you will, because it was found out that a few women suffered from blood clots as a result of taking this poke. Now this is one dose, not like the other manufacturers uh, who have uh, two doses, meaning you have to go you know, two times to get, to get poked. Johnson & Johnson is a one and done. So they kind of took it off the shelves. I think that they are resuming using the Johnson & Johnson um, you know, brand. I think it's back in effect, correct me if I'm wrong. So this is courtesy of a baller alerts on their Instagram page. The president and CEO of whatever, whatever Johnson and Johnson, yada, yada, uh, vaccine manufacturer. So more than $10 million worth of stocks before millions of doses of the vax were ruined at a Baltimore facility. Now, according to the post, the guy sold off the CEO, Robert Kramer. He sold off shares of the company in late January and again in early February, totaling over $10 million. Those shares are now worth $5.5 million. These massive sales come just before 15 million of the J&J Vax were contaminated, causing a Vax shortage. However, a spokesperson for Emergent says that the sale was already scheduled to take place. Of course it was! Sure. All of Mr. Kramer's sales were previously scheduled under one or one zero B five dash one trading plans. This is what a emergent spokesperson said. She also added that, you know, this was, this wasn't intentional, yada, yada, whatever. Yeah, sure. Lady this, this sounds like what they locked up. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Martha Stewart for inside trading this smells like inside trading is it me correct me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. already planned my left foot so what do you guys think about this let me know and again did you get vexed this is a judgment free zone all right what's up next i tell you I, I got a little i got a little list here so i'm trying to stay on track and i may be a little rusty because it's been a while since i've been alive Oh, I wanted to talk about this. I found this interesting. So Steve Harvey, Mara, not Mara Harvey. What's her name? Ma Marjorie, his wife. Marjorie 
Harvey's husband, decided to talk about his relationship and, you know, his marriage and why he doesn't have female friends, right? Now, I think this is an old clip. This is courtesy of the Jasmine brand on their Instagram page. Now, y'all know that Steve Harvey likes to think that he's some sort of relationship guru. I don't know why, personally. I'm not knocking the man's hustle, but I don't think that his advice is good advice. That's just my opinion. Some people do. That's on you. You do what you need to do. So I guess this is an old clip. This might have resurfaced. But I thought that this was very interesting and want you to take a listen. All of my friends are men. I don't have female friends. I don't. I'm, I'm incapable of that. Why? And, what do you mean? Well, because, you know, come on. Because you have a wife. Real. Well, I have a wife and I don't, I don't really have female friends because, look, okay, let's get rid of this <laughs> myth right here. Okay, I'm going to tell you this. Let's get rid of this right here. There, you, you're an attractive woman. There are some guys somewhere saying, yeah, I'm, we're friends. No, that's not true. He's your friend only because you have made it absolutely clear that nothing else is happening except this friendship we have. We remain your friends in hopes that one day there'll be a crack in the door, a chink in the armor. And trust and believe that guy that you think is just your buddy, he will slide in that crack <laughs> the moment he gets the opportunity. Because we're most guys. And you think this way? Uh, 99.9% .9 of us think that way. All of my friends are men. I don't have... Are you buying what Steve Harvey is selling? Steve Harvey says that he doesn't have female friends. He's a married man. Women, he finds certain women attractive. He said, guys, wait for that crack in the door and slide right in. He's saying that that's why guys, because he's the spokesperson for all men. Okay, y'all hear this, fellas? That's what all guys do. Here's the thing. I feel that men and women are perfectly capable of being in a platonic relationship. I don't think that it has to be about being sexually attracted to somebody. You know what I'm saying? A man and a woman can be friends and keep it platonic and respectful. Now, is it his choice to not have female friends? Yes. His reasoning behind that sounds sketchy to me, but that's, that works for him. If he's telling the truth, that's on him. But what I get from this is what he's not saying, in my opinion, is that he is incapable of exhibiting self-control as a man. So he reduces females, in my opinion, women, to sexual beings. That's it. That's all. He says, come on now, you know, you're an attractive woman. So you can't, you mean to tell me as a married man, as a grown man, an adult adult, you're incapable of self-control. I do reviews on shows. I remember I was doing, um, marriage boot camp, and you remember, uh, what's his name? Is his name Willie from day 26? Remember he was cheating on Shauna all the time. And I say, I oftentimes say people cheat because they want to. Point blank period. It's not because, oh, they're not getting this at home. And it's a matter of discipline and self-control, in my opinion. That's it. That's all. If you want to exhibit self-control, you will. If you want to be disciplined, you will. You can blame other people all you want, but nobody forces you to do something that you don't want to do. Right? The, the desire is already there. You just need the temptation. If you fall victim to temptation, that means the desire was already in you. But hey, what do I know? I am not a relationship guru. Steve Harvey is. So you drop down in the comments and you let me know. But I think that that is so sad that as a grown man, you don't have any self-control because, oh, an attractive woman, you're an attractive woman, and I'm going to be tempted. You're an attractive woman. Really? So that's all women are to you? Anywho, moving along, speaking of women's, the Real Housewives of Atlanta. All right, so if you guys have been keeping up with my community tab, I really don't have, I didn't really have an interest um, in Housewives of Atlanta. I think I did two reviews or one. I think I did one. Did I do one or two? I don't remember of this season. This season was a flop. Uh, <laughs> everybody's reporting how low the ratings are how it's bad, 
it's just bad. It's just really, really bad. So I did get the opportunity to watch the um reunion. And I wanted to see what the ladies were going to wear. You know, I wanted to see what the set design was going to be like. So the theme was like dungeon-esque type theme, I guess. And I, let me just say this. I don't, you know, Candy has really been able to capitalize off of this, you know, sex dungeon, you know, thing. And a lot of people think it's cute. You know, Candy going to get to the bag. I just think it's it's real messed up. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not hating on her. She do she do what she got to do. Make her money. Do you? You ain't hurt nobody. However, Phaedra was let go because she expressed something that she heard. Right? <sighs> Candy was up up there crying. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. You know she doesn't want anybody be smeeching her name. But then turns around and I guess makes lemons out of lemonade and capitalize. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just feel weird about it. But whatever. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Anywho, the ladies look great with the exception of I did not like what Candy had on and I did not like what Latoya had on. That's it. That's all. Um, it's the same old, same old with these households. Um, Kenya, and I mean, I mean households in the most respectful way. Okay. You know, hopefully no one will get uptight. Um, Kenya was still juvenile with her behavior. You know, I thought that the BLM situation, you know, Kenya, listen, man. Kenya, you a grown woman. Like, you grown, grown. You know what I mean? And I'm not shaming anybody because of their age. But it's really sad that a black woman, a 50-year-old black woman who has a major platform would say something so reckless like, oh, you're using this movement to another black woman for a storyline. I just, to trivialize the BLM movement like that, coming out of your mouth as a 50-year-old black woman, damn, will you do anything just to get screen time on a reality show? I just think that's a, that's so like reckless, and it's just it's some it's nothing off limits for reality television. Like it's just like we're gonna go all the way. You're trivializing it in front of these, you know, privilege producers, privilege executives, excuse me, privilege decision makers at this network that has been accused of being discriminatory, and you turn around and say, oh, she's using the BLM movement for a storyline. Damn. And she got no reprimand for that. Of course she's not going to get any reprimand for that because the privileged folks that are in charge and pulling the plugs and pulling the strings, oh, yeah, they're going to eat this up. And, again, it's coming from a black woman about another black woman. Kenya, you reckless. And I just feel like – I don't even I don't even take Kenya serious. I can't take her serious. I refuse. I do, I can't. There's no reason for me. And I think out of the reunion, out of the whole reunion, I think that's my biggest gripe. And I saw the episode where she said that and it's just like I didn't even watch consistently. And I just feel like it just turned me off. Um I wasn't really interested, especially when certain people came on the show. It's just like, yeah, this is this is desperation at its finest. Um, as far as Drew and Kenya, whatever drama, you know, Drew and her husband. All right, girl, you know, you want to believe that that man was doing whatever in Tampa and he was faithful. Sure. I didn't like that. Candy was making all of these faces and Andy was kind of looking to her like, what was she? His 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 secret co-host like who who cares what candy approves of when did candy become like the the, the co-host of of the reunion i don't know i just but that can that situation with kenya i just feel like kenya doesn't care about anything but kenya and that's fine but i feel like again you trying to trivialize portia's activism and also the black lives matter movement Saying that, I don't think she realized how dangerous that is because she is someone who was on a huge platform. And again, you're working for a company that has been accused by more than one black woman of discriminatory practices. So for you to say that, 
girl, are you like, are you tone deaf? I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's, that's. <laughs> oh, heaven help us. You know, I don't, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe I'm expecting too much from Kenya, but I just don't feel that it's anything to expect. It's you're a black woman, girl. What? Like, why would you even bring that? You couldn't talk about nothing else. Leave that out of it. And even if she used that for a storyline, is that a bad thing to bring that type of awareness to that particular platform? Is that bad? No, I don't I don't think it is. Anyway, moving along. Speaking of housewives of Atlanta, it is being said they do this all the time. This is the Jasmine Brands Instagram post. They do this every year all the time. Oh, Phaedra's coming back or this person's coming back. I wouldn't be surprised if they, they start rumors that Nene is coming back. Now, producers, are they reportedly want Phaedra Parks to return for season 14. They're saying that season 13, the ratings were so low. There have been many reports, a lot of uh, people reporting how low the ratings were. Um, and I can see why. The ratings were, the, the show was just... I'm going to need them to wake it up. I'm going to need a rearranging of, of, of cast members. I just think that Latoya coming on the show, it really, like, it just decreased in value. Like, the property value went down. You know, it's like, eh, some people get laughs out of Latoya. I, not quite. I just, I'm good off that. So... According to a recent report by The Sun, Phaedra Parks could be gracing television screens once again for Roa's upcoming 14th season. Reportedly, due to a drop in the show's ratings and popularity for the 13th season, Bravo executives are considering bringing Phaedra Parks back to switch up the current cast and hopefully boost the show's rating. Now, this is according to The, the, to the Sun. Uh, do y'all believe this? I don't. I don't believe this at all. I know that Bravo is supposed to be doing a special on uh, in association with Watch What Happens Live, which is Andy's like little talk show uh, on the network. And they are supposed to be bringing, I think Phaedra is going to be on there. I think uh, some of the kids from current and previous cast members of Real Housewives of Atlanta or Re the Real Housewives franchise, uh, they're going to be on the show. Um it's a special. I don't think, I don't know if it's a test run to give the kids like a spinoff, the Real Housewives franchise chill, the kids, a spinoff. I don't know. Do I think Phaedra's coming back? I don't. I will be shocked if she does because Candy made it very clear that if Phaedra returns, she won't be returning. And Candy is Bravo's cash cow. You know, she, they, they get a cut of her businesses because she, promotes whatever she promotes on the show that's part of their contract whatever business she promotes on the show bravo gets a cut of that i think it's like 20 i don't think it's 30 percent. i don't remember the percentage but i remember reading that reporting on that months ago so they not they're not gonna get rid of candy why would they you know what i'm saying they're, they're making money they're getting a return on their investment if phaedra was to come back that would be interesting I would want to see Nini and Phaedra back, but I don't think it's a good idea for Nini to return. I think that, you know, it's run its course. She needs to move on. She's currently doing her um, thing in the restaurant business, getting ready to open up the Lanethia Lounge next month. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what Phaedra is doing, but I will say that Phaedra was very entertaining. Uh, she was funny. She was fun. And I like the fact that every season when she was on, she showcased her uh, philanthropy. I love that. You know, I absolutely, absolutely love that. So I don't know. I think, I think, can, can Candy, Candy could actually go, but I know Bravo's not going to get rid of her. I think Bravo would get rid of, uh, or uh, Andy and them, they would get rid of Kenya before they get rid of Candy. I don't see them getting rid of Candy like that because I feel like, they like her. She seems like she's easy to work with. She says that she loves working at Bravo. You know, Andy cares about what she thinks. Um, I think that she's pleasant to work with. And I think that she's very business minded, business oriented. And I think it just makes it smooth sailing for Bravo. So, I mean, 
hey, that's what that's what they want. And I know she did her. She recently did her. Uh, what's the name of her show? Her little after show. I can't think of it right now. She does her little after show on on YouTube and speak on it. And she talked about she was talking to Don Juan. I saw a little clip and she was talking about how some of the, the some of the things that she brought to the table that she wanted to see more of Bravo doing. You know, she said she wanted to see more uh, black hiring black executives, uh, interns to work behind the scene in production and, you know, collaborating with HBCUs giving, you know, black kids a chance to intern or to kind of come into the um, the production realm or TV realm and, you know, bringing more people, black people on on board. And I said to myself, isn't that what Nene was trying to do? But whatever, 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 whatever. I'm not even going down that rabbit hole. I'm not going down that rabbit hole at all. So again, I don't believe that Portia will be back. If she comes back, I will be excited. I will be tuned in because I do enjoy, Por uh, not Portia, Phaedra. I do enjoy Phaedra, the good, the bad, all, everything I do. And again, I like the fact that she's very involved in her community and different organizations. And she's always showcased that when she was on the show. All right. So let me know what you think. All right. Let's move this train along. What I got next on the list. I miss you guys. All right, let me see. There was something that I saw on the, <laughs> yo, this was funny. There's something that I saw on the, uh, on the shade room. Cause you know, everybody, everybody be doing their little one, two, one, two going on the shade room, the shade room comments be popping. I thought that this was very interesting. So this woman, she wants her ex, her husband's ex to pay child support for the child that she has with this man. I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous. So listen to this. This is the post. I don't know if I'm being petty here, but I feel like I'm not. So my ex-husband remarried and has kids with his wife. She owns a business and I found out that she makes almost $1 million a year. My ex works and gives me $900 a month in child support for our daughter, but I don't think it's fair. I told him that it would be nice if he sent me more for my daughter. He told me that his wife and his accounts are not together. Okay, you're following along? But honestly, I want to take him and his wife to court to get the max amount I can for my daughter. I work from home and my husband is in the army, but we are struggling. It would be nice to have that additional income that my daughter deserves. What do you guys think? Now, this is an interesting, I know, <laughs> I know the first thing some of you are saying is, oh, hell nah, in my Maya Wilkes voice. So to sum it up, a woman has a child. She and the child's father, her ex-husband, obviously no longer together, her child's father, who was her ex-husband, married to a woman who makes a million dollars a year. The mother of the child has her own has remarried. That new husband is in the army. They don't make a lot of money. They're struggling. She feels that she should carry her ex-husband's new wife to court, the two of them to court, so she can get more money. She's getting $900 a month now. Please tell me what you guys think about this. I don't I don't even know where to start. First of all, I'm going to tell you something right now. Don't watch my my pockets. Don't watch my pockets. I don't I hate pocket watchers. I hate people who want to know how much you spent on this, how much money they think you have. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I feel that the her ex-husband's new wife her money, I don't, doesn't have anything to do with the child. However, correct me if I'm wrong. If the woman's baby father or ex-husband falls behind on child support because he is married, wouldn't that be the new wife's res financial responsibility as well? Like if they start garnishing his wages, can they garnish her wages too, even though they have separate bank accounts? 
I, I wouldn't know. Let me know. I've heard that before. Um, I don't think that she should take that woman to court because you didn't make that baby with that woman. Um, what I do think she should do is if she wants to adjust the child support, take him to court. I don't, I don't see why she would be taking the ex-husband's new wife to court. You can get that adjusted. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I know. I do know, but I just want to hear what y'all think. Put it that way. Girl, you, you, you bugging, bugging. I wouldn't, girl, you bugging, bugging. Stay out of people's pockets. Stop pocket watching. That is so lame to me. Anyway, moving along. NBA young boy. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? NBA young boy has a, uh, a fan. And I thought that this was so cute. So one of his fans wrote him a letter, right? I'm going to play it. I'm just going to give you a little summary. One of his fans wrote him a letter because, you know, NBA young boy is currently behind those, those walls, right? Um, and one of his fans wrote him a letter and sent him pictures of her room. She got her room decked out with all NBA young boy stuff. And she left her number in the letter and he called her from behind the wall. I thought this was so cute. All right, take a listen. What did you say? What did you say? I said I'd never do anything like that. I was calling to thank you for writing me. I got your letter. It made me smile. Oh, my gosh, you're welcome. I love you so much. Dad, <laughs> really, 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 I'm in love. Yeah. I've been in love with your room. It's so cool. Let me see. You see my room? Yes, I saw your Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> Let me talk to him. Yeah, yeah, this is really a man, young boy. <laughs> Say something so he knows really you. I'm recording, Mom. Can you say something? Let me see. Let me talk. Okay. This really him. Right? Aries really you. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> no, don't follow me. K O Y A. This man. I can't. So that was, she had her family in the background <clears throat> and everybody was all excited. So this is what she posted. She said, so this is what the fan posted. So the best thing ever just happened to me, y'all. NBA young boy, call me, listen to it. I wrote my number in my letter. I thought this was a prank. He said, no, I would never do nothing like that. This little top. Is that, is that one of his other names? I, I don't know. Yeah, young folk, you let me know. Um, I sent pictures of my room and all. Don't mind my sister. Laughing emoji, laughing emoji. I didn't get the part when I asked, can I meet him when he get out? He was like, hopefully. Y'all don't know how much this shocked me. I'm still in disbelief. I fell in love with your room. This is what he, this is what NBA young boy said. And all y'all don't talk about me crying. Laughing emoji. <laughs> if y'all ask my family and everybody around me, my only dreams was to meet NBA young boy and drive a Tesla and both came true. Oh, well, I didn't meet him, but still y'all know what I mean. My life, my life is complete. Yikes. Um, so this is the picture or the little video. She sent him pictures of her, her room. So her wall is decked out with NBA young boy photos. She got blankets, pillows with his face on it, a carp, a rug. That's pretty cool. On the floor, uh, young young folk don't worship people. Okay, I understand you're excited and you they get so starstruck and, but my life is complete. Mm -mm. Be careful of the words that you say. I ain't trying to be a negative Nancy. I'm just saying. So I thought that that was cute. If you heard uh, NBA Young Boy uh, on the call, he said, you know, I thought that that was so cool. You know, I'm really grateful. He, to me, seems like, even though he's in a lot of trouble legally, I don't know, there's something, there's like an innocence about him. Am I tripping? I don't know. Maybe I'm doing too much. But whenever he talks, like, there's something about him that's like so innocent. I don't know. Well, I wish him well and, and good luck with everything. All right, Yo, up this next. Is method, man. I'm going to need to mute this stuff. Up next. So, you guys... Have you guys been watching Power Book 2, Ghosts, right? Season 1 was pretty good. Um, Tommy showed up at the at the end, and everybody was, well, I was excited. You know, y'all kept calling on Tommy, and he showed up. 
So they did get renewed for a season two of Power Book Two, Ghosts. So you know Method Man is in the show and he plays a lawyer, like a real slimy slickster, you know, attorney lawyer or whatever. Tasha, you know, ended up getting off. Uh, Tasha is in some sort of safe house or whatever. I think that she will not be on the show as regularly as she used uh, used to be. What the heck is her name in real life? Um, Notori Naughton. And because she's supposed to be on a show called Queens with, I think, with Eve, Brandy, and Notori Naughton and a couple of other people. But anyway, so guess who is joining the show? Okay, let's start from the beginning. Well, you already said Power Book 2, and it's going to be fire! Fire. So y'all stay tuned, man. We'll keep locked in, you know what I mean? Yo, this is Method Man. First, let me pull this mask down. Let me tell y'all something. This is Method Man right here. Uh -huh. I'm on the set of Ghosts. What's that? Season 2. Power Book 2. Season 2. Right, right. And guess who I'm shooting a scene with today? Who? Never get. Who? Who? <laughs> That's right, y'all. Funk Doc is on the scene <laughs> yes, with your sir. brother. Yes, sir. I'm playing this bro on Ghost Power Book 2, and it's going to be fire! Fire. So y'all stay tuned. Shout out to Jersey. Y'all know Method Man is from, from Jersey, okay? I think that this is amazing. It seemed like, child, they, they over there hiring everybody, right? Um, How did this come about? I think that Method Man put him on. They recently did a versus. Did you guys catch that? I thought that was great. Um, damn. Keith Murray showed up. I First of all, I love Keith Murray. I love his voice. But anyway, I think Method Man, you know, put his brother on. I'm here for it. I love it. You know, get Redman a little bit of work. I think Redman is going to do phenomenal because he's a character already. So he is supposed to be playing uh, Method Man's brother who is incarcerated. I was reading up on this or whatever uh, on another site. So he's going to be playing his incarcerated older brother, Redman, that is. So this should be interesting to see where this goes. I know the story of Kanan, that's supposed to be the next show coming out. Um, hopefully they'll keep it fresh. I have faith in Courtney Kemp as far as her writing abilities, because this is Courtney Kemp's show. I'm going to keep saying that those of you who are, you know, not new here. I say that all the time. You know what I mean? 50 cent has his inputs and he is executive producer, but the creator and showrunner of power and all the power series is Courtney Kemp. Okay. Going to keep saying that. Anywho. So yeah, tell me what you think about um about Redman joining the cast. This should definitely be interesting. All right, y'all. We winding down. Speaking of Method Man, even though Redman wasn't a part of this group, but speaking of Method Man, look who is writing a book, y'all. Look, Raekwon. Raekwon has released, well, he wrote a book. He released a new book about his life story from staircase to stage. This is the cover of the book. And it's basically a book about his life, a story of a kid from Staten Island who faced countless adversities to then connect with one of the biggest hip hop groups on the planet, right? So this is pretty dope. Are you guys going to be reading this? I'm gonna see if I could check it out. You know how you can get like previews from like um, a books online, maybe Audible will have it or Amazon. I, I want to check it out. I want to see, you know, read some of it. Um, I think this will be interesting. First of all, this is a hip hop icon who's part himself and uh, he's part of a iconic group, <clears throat> excuse me, in hip hop. Wu-Tang is like a household name. And uh, I like the fact that the Wu-Tang brand is global global that's huge you know that's really really huge some people who you wouldn't even think you know would be wu-tang fans <clears throat> are wu-tang fans anyway but they have a global brand and they've amassed major success as a group and some of the members you know individually um red man is not a part of wu-tang just 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 want to let it be known some of you probably already know that but i think that this is great i think a lot of our legends um who we grew up listening to and watching. Uh, some of them are, are, you know, going up yonder, especially what's been happening, you know, recently. We lost a few legends, you know what I mean? And to see Raekwon 
still here, still relevant, still working in the industry, still making music, and now has a book about his life story. I'm I'm totally interested. Let me know what you think. I think this is great. I want to see more of our uh, legends writing books. You know what I'm saying? Taking care of themselves. You know what I mean? Nothing wrong with that. And it's a good way to make money, you know? Sometimes, you know, books, they sell well and they, they do well. All right, who is next? Uh, Megan Thee Stallion and Lil, Lil Baby. Megan Thee Stallion and Lil Baby, they remixed Lil Baby's song, okay? To remix or not to remix? So this is, you know... Some images, you see Meg, you see um, On Me is the name of the song. To remix or not to remix? Of course, I'm not going to play the song, not going to play the video. It's on YouTube. You can see it for yourself. I don't know. I just, I don't know. Everybody wants to remix everything these days. I just, sometimes remixes are not necessary. Um, I did get an opportunity to see the video and... I just wanted to talk about like the looks in the video. <laughs> the song, it's not a bad song, okay? I can go on and on talking about music, but it's not a bad song. Is it unique? No. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because there's this sound. I don't know, well, like what's little little baby sound? Like the baby, little baby, like what's that? Is that trap? I guess that would be considered trap. And then this this use of the um the auto tune. Listen, if it works for you, do you know, do you. I'm a lover of music, so I'm going to at least listen so that I can give a, a honest critique. I may not, you know, like it per se, but I'm going to listen and stay abreast of all of this, this, this young folk music because I love music. Is the song bad? No, it's not a bad song. Is it unique? No, it, like we heard this. This sound is, is similar you know, to what a lot of people are, um, are doing now. Meg the stallion is featured on the remix again to remix or not to remix. I know a lot of, a lot of people do remixes, you know what I mean? To push, to push streams so they can get up there on the billboard charts, you know, and also sometimes to put other artists on, um, I come from the era of the bad boy era. So when, when, when Diddy and them did a remix, it was a remix. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you didn't even know that you needed that remix, but you glad that you got the remix. Nowadays, it's kind of like, mm, did you really need to remix this song? No shade, but did you really need to remix this song? The good thing about it is that it allows artists to collaborate, which is great. Uh, it pushes for more streams for the for the song itself, which is which is great, I guess, but. Again, to remix or not to remix. Anyway, as far as the look, I think Meg looks absolutely great. Uh, Lil Baby looks great too. I don't, I don't have any issues with Lil Baby. You know, I understand that music is going to continue to evolve and there are going to be certain types of artists that are not people's favorite. That's totally fine. Um, I do like Meg Thee Stallion <clears throat> because Meg Thee Stallion is a rapper's rapper. You know, I like that. Um, I see that she is trying to class it up a little bit. I'm here for that. Um, you know, the booty shorts and the, and the, and the coochie cutters. Okay, mad girl, we're going to need you to kind of class it up a little bit. You're getting, you're getting a little older, you know, um, put some, put a little bit more clothes on, still be sexy, but put a little bit more clothes on classy, class it up a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. Right. So what else do we have here? Yeah. little baby just looks, you know, ordinary, regular, 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 regular dude. Um, yeah, so, I mean, did you guys see the video? See, this is cute. I think this is cute. Here's the thing. I've complained about this before. Why are these artists making all of these short songs? I know it's expensive to shoot a, a music video. I know it is. But what is the deal with these songs that are, like, under three minutes some of y'all man i don't know maybe maybe it's just me i guess i'm just stuck in the 90s <laughs> i don't know so tell me what you guys thought of the looks what did you think of the song um is it a song that i'm gonna be bopping on a regular no 
Um, if I hear the song, then I, then, you know, I just hear the song. If it happens to be on the radio or if somebody's playing the song in a video, okay, it is what it is. Now, there has been a little bit of drama, as usual, uh, surrounding this song. So, apparently, Amaretta, excuse me, is a rapper from um, uh, Atlanta, He's an Atlanta rapper as well. And Lil Baby is an Atlanta rapper. So this is a post from the Neighborhood Talk. Big up yourself, Neighborhood Talk. People are saying, why wasn't Armoretta? Am I saying her name right? Armoretta, right? I'm just thinking of Armoretta Sour. Why isn't Armoretta, why wasn't Armoretta on the remix to this song? Here we go. Because she did a freestyle if I'm not mistaken, did I hear it? No, but I was just reading. Um, and it's like, okay, well she's from Atlanta, you know, she's an up and coming rapper. Why didn't Lil baby put her on the remix? Let me, let me tell you, I noticed that a lot. Like a lot of, a lot of fans and viewers, you know, um, listeners of these artists and of music, they try to dictate what these artists should and shouldn't do. What's what's up with that? Why you can't just listen to a song, listen to a freestyle, listen to a remix, critique it, and gone are the days where you can make a suggestion without it being hate. Now everything is hate. If I say, oh, this person would sound good on it, oh, you hating on such and such. You can't even, <clears throat> excuse me, you can't even have a logical conversation with some people. Because I like discussing music. I can go on and on and on, right? But I, I can't talk to people who have a, a limited perception and, and limited vocabulary and just regurgitate what everybody else says, who, who can't have an objective perspective. I can't talk to people like that. Like, you know, I can't talk to people who bring up things that have nothing to do with the topic at hand. I, I can't, I re, well, not that I can't, I refuse to. If we're going to talk music, let's talk music. Like, let's talk. Here's the thing. I can understand why people would say, I've listened to some of Armoretta's freestyles. Um, do I like her? She's, okay, yeah. Like, I don't dislike her. Put it that way, I don't dislike her. But I want to see more than you just spit in a cute hot 16. What else you got? Because there's a lot of competition out here, right? And this is a business. So whoever is in charge of marketing you, whoever's putting money into you, whether you're going to be independent or sign, you got to, you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to have some it factor. Heavy bars, being a female in this industry is a plus. But you also have to have sex appeal. You also have to have a personality, right, that people can gravitate towards. I'm not saying that you have to be fake, but you have to have a personality. People have to want to know what's up with you, you know? People are going to want to know what you're wearing. People are going to want to know who you're listening to, who you want to collab with. People are going to take interest in you, right? And when they're tired of you, they're going to move on to the next person. There's no loyalty in the business. That's just with the fans, all of that. It's none. Anyway, do I feel... Oh, why you didn't put Amaretta on the on the on the track is necessary? No. You can't tell Lil Baby, who is a signed artist, he's not an independent artist, who's a signed artist, who he should and should not have to the point where you're bullying him. No, man, what's wrong with y'all? What's wrong with y'all? And then the artists sometimes feed into it and start throwing shade. So this is what some of the people had to say. She posted it be your own city on her story because when baby asked who should be on the remix, a lot of people were saying her, but he put Meg on it. Armoretta and Lil Baby are both from Atlanta. So, so what? Somebody else said no disrespect to Meg, but damn, Lil Baby should have really put Armoretta on the remix. Sis body that ish. That's what female artists mean about the game not being fair. Give these new artists a chance to shine. It's comments like these that annoy me. It's comments like these that annoy me. Everybody that get in the music business, whether you want to say that they had favors done for them or not, you got to work. People are not just going to put you on just because you think they, they should put you on. And again, a lot of the fans 
fuel a lot of the foolishness. And then sometimes, unfortunately, the artists buy into the foolishness. They, you know what I mean? They just need somebody to encourage the nonsense and then they buy into it. And it's like, that's not a good look. Someone else said, Lil Baby, lame as F. He know he could have put Armoretta on the Army remix. We tired of hearing Meg talking about the same ish. It be your own city. <laughs> what? Does he even know Armoretta personally? Like, does he know her? Someone else said, Lil Baby pissing me off. He keep putting all the wrong people on remixes. God dang. We wanted Armoretta. I love Meg, but I'm tired of her on features. It's tired. And for some songs, she just not the right pick. But guess what? The record company may think that, that she is the right pick. Lil Baby really chose the stallion over Armoretta for the Army remix. I'm like mind blown. So now my thing is when all of a sudden people stop thinking that Meg was a worthy artist to be on features. I thought everybody liked Meg because she's a, a spitter and she's, you see what I'm saying? They love you one minute. And the next minute they get tired of you and they start talking trash. So this is what Armoretta posted to her story. I'm happy y'all seeing this for what it is. See, this is when the artists buy into the fans saying certain things. Even if you feel this way, Armoretta, I don't think you should have posted this. Because it's going to make you look like you're a baby throwing a temper tantrum because you didn't get what you wanted. Don't work like that, sweetie. Not in the business. The business is going to chew you up and spit you out. New music on the way. I'm not letting up. Good. Here's the thing. You may be tired of Meg. That's fine. You may be tired of this one, tired of that one. That's fine. But here's the thing. You want to break into the industry if you sit around and you're a new artist, a lot of people have never even heard of Armoretta outside of Atlanta, right? I've heard of her because I, I like keeping up with some of the, you know, the unsigned hype, you know what I mean? And, you know, when they do the little freestyles and stuff like that, Rocky is another one out of Philly. Yeah, I've been, I've been watching her for a minute, but that's neither here nor there, okay? Let me, that's, we'll save that for another time. Why does everybody, why do some of these artists get in here, get in the game and feel like, yeah, I'm hot. You should automatically put me on. When did it ever work like that? Just shut up and make music. That's it. That's all. You are, you want to break into the industry. You want to work with a lot of people. You know, you like a lot of rappers. I'm glad y'all seeing the BS. What are you talking about? How do you know that when baby, when Lil Baby got on social media and asked who y'all want to see on the remix, how you know he didn't already have Megan Thee Stallion signed, sealed, and, and done? He could have just been asking just to see. Don't fall, don't fall, don't let these, don't let these fans hype you up for your demise. Because I'm gonna tell you something, young lady. When they get tired of you, like once you bust and you get on, and if you if they get tired of you or something that you don't like or you say something they don't like, trust me, they'll be on to the next. You better be careful. Don't be posting these, oh, you see the BS, you see the BS that they on. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't think you got enough skin in the game to be complaining. I'm just saying I am not trying to be shady at all. This is what she had to say. If you don't listen, because this is not my style. I just not finna listen to no female rap, like, cause I don't really listen to this type of shit. So like, when I plug up my shit, like, I turn on my files. I listen to myself. I ain't really like. If you catch me with my headphones in, I'm listening to my own music. I ain't just jamming nobody. Baby rapper. <sighs> When I tell y'all I don't listen to rappers, I'm dead serious. I, and I'm gonna definitely don't listen because this is not my style. I just not finna listen to no female rap. Like, cause I don't really listen to that type of shit. So, like, when I. Wait, that's kinda weird. What's weird? So, before you start rapping, you ain't listen to no other female rappers? Please, no. I've never listened to female rappers. Like, of course, we, you listen to Nicki on the radio and stuff, but. The, fe the rappers that I used to listen to growing up, I listened to Eminem, I listened to Lil Wayne, I listened to Plies, I listened to T.I., Jeezy, I listened to um, Webby, 
I listen to Webby and, Webby and Boosie song, but I ain't never listen to no female rappers. Like, how everybody be knowing. Wait, that's kind of weird. So you see how in the comments, I couldn't read what the comments were saying, but to me, and this is um, from Got The Scoop on their Instagram page. They posted this a few days ago or a few hours ago. And people are asking her in the comments. She's going live on her IG. Oh, who's your favorite rapper? Who's your favorite? I can only imagine pressuring her. And people ask that because they want to see what side you're going to pick. And y'all know what I'm talking about. They want to see, are you going to be team this, team this, or team this? And I feel like, even if she was lying, because people in the comments were saying, like, eh, she lying. They already getting at you. Oh, she lying. How she listened to Lil Wayne and she don't, um, how she listened to Lil Wayne and she don't sit, she don't, she don't listen to female rappers. Lil Wayne collab with Nicki Minaj. And, and I'm going to tell you something. She, tr she said that she doesn't listen to a lot of female rappers. You know, of course, she said she listened to Nicki on the radio, but she named a lot of male rappers. Even if she's lying, she's smart. And I'm going to tell you why, in my opinion. She's smart not to pick a side. She fresh in the game to, uh, to most of us. You know, she may have been doing this for a very long time, but a lot of people have not heard of her. You know, if you've heard of her and you know she creating a lot of buzz, put it in the comments. If you've never heard of her, Put it in the comments. You know, everybody's not privy to certain artists. You know what I mean? Anyway, she's smart for answering that way. Because if she would have said one particular female rapper, that would have caused problems. If she would have said a different one, it would have caused problems. They automatically forcing her to pick sides as it pertains to let's see who she rocking with. She also, part of this live, she said that she wanted to do a collaboration with Rihanna. That that's the only person that she's interested in collabing with. You know, once she gets her collaboration with Rihanna, she'll be set. And I think that that's cute. That'd be dope. And I also think that that was the safe answer as well because Rihanna's not a rapper, right? So, again, here it is. Some of these fans are expecting her to pick a side. That's why they're asking these questions. And she's smart enough to say, whether she's telling the truth or not, I don't really listen to female rappers like that. I listen to Webby, Boosie, Eminem, Lil Wayne. T.I., you good, smart girl. Don't you let these people pigeonhole you into picking a specific side because once you say, I like this rapper, they're going to they gonna nail you to the cross for it, even though it's innocent. You, you know what I mean? And I just think that that's smart of her. And I think that um, a lot of these new uh, you know, female rappers should steer clear of answering that question because every new artist, female artist, did it to Meg too, that comes in the game. Who are your top female artists? Who are your top rappers? It's always the same type of question. And if they say, Boom Shakalaka is my favorite female rapper, and later on down the line, they do a, a, a song or they mention a different interview. They don't mention Boom Shakalaka. They mention somebody else. They're going to use that soundbite from that initial interview and hold it against you. It's pathetic. It's quite pathetic. So I just wish that a lot of female artists, when they come in the game, steer clear of that trap. And it's a shame. You can't even say, this is I like this particular rapper, you know. I like this particular rap because, again, you get pigeonholed or it's like, no, you don't really like this person. You're using this person's name for clout or why you like this person and don't like that person. If I was a female rapper coming into the game, I would say I like all female rappers. Why doesn't anybody mention Missy Elliott? I love Missy Elliott. I, I will always love Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott is one of a kind. But anyway, I don't want to go off on a tangent. You know, and I would, if I was doing like, you know, PR um, or like media training, that's another thing that's missing. I posted this on my Twitter. Can we please bring back like artist development and media training? A lot of these artists screw themselves over when they hit go live on their Instagram and they say and do some foolishness. You know, I don't think these, these um, record companies care anymore about artist development. It's just how many, how much money can we make off this artist? I mean, it's always been like that, but I feel like if you are invested in a product um, or a person as a product, you're invested in someone, you would spend the money to, you know, train them, 
you know, develop them as an artist and things like that. So you can get at least maximum return on your investment. No, but I, I don't know. Maybe like times have changed, I guess. Budgets might not be as strong as they used to be, but I really want to see artist development um, come back in style, you know, media training, come back in style, how to answer certain questions, because I noticed any new female artists unsigned, signed, there's always usually a man inter when a man is interviewing them, that's always the question, who are your favorite female rappers? What do you think about this particular female rapper? And they'll they'll get specific and name a specific female rapper. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, it's not even because the interviewer, in my opinion, genuinely wants to know who their fave is. Mm -mm. It's, to, it's, to, it's to get people riled up because these interviewers know if this fem new female artist says that this particular female rapper is my favorite, then some people are gonna get mad if they say this particular, and it and it and it can it can crush these new artists before they even really get a foot in the door. Because I'm telling you, the media, the the public is brutal. They're brutal when it comes to who they feel a female artist should and shouldn't like coming into the game. So again, I'm getting off track. If she was lying about not listening to female art, female artists, it, she was smart to answer it that way, in my opinion. She was very smart to answer it that way. So what's next? So what y'all think of Armoretta? Do you think, you know, y'all like her? Did y'all listen to her freestyle? Um, I wanted to get into this story about Jay-Z. I saw this on the Jasmine Brands. Um, Instagram page if it will load bear with me y'all bear with me how's everybody doing out there everybody all right so again this is the Jasmine brand their IG page they posted to this posted to their IG page so Jay-Z says that his family is his number one priority feeling loved is the most important thing a child needs not here's this business I'm going to hand over to you so this is this is interesting did you guys get an opportunity to read this article so the caption reads, in a rare interview, rapper and entrepreneur Jay-Z, born Sean Carter, recently bared his thoughts on family life, the state of the nation, and how he'll be remembered. Firstly, however, Jay-Z lets fans know that he has been busy making money moves. Yeah, we know, those of us who've been keeping up with you, we see what you're doing, Sean. Anyway. Um, in recent months, he has already gotten into the cannabis business, sold a majority stake in title and sold half of his champagne brand, uh, to Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton. While Jay-Z has clearly been busy, he also acknowledges that while he misses being on tour, he does not currently plan on doing so for some time. Good, Jay-Z, you... Who, unless you and Kanye are getting back together and gonna be touring together, I'm not interested. And musically, Kanye West and Jay-Z are gold. But I digress. Uh, what else? He also, he's also sure to point out that his main priority at this time is his family, not business ventures. He told Louis Wise of the Sunday Times, Jay-Z says, feeling love is the most important thing a child needs, you know? Not here's the business that I'm going to hand over to you, that I'm creating for you. He continues, just make sure we provide a loving environment. Uh, be very attentive to who they want to be. It's easy for us as human beings to want our children to do certain things, but we have no idea. We're just guides. What do you think about that? I think that that was a very interesting statement. I don't disagree with him. Um... Now, do I believe, do I whole, do I 100% believe the part where he says, you know, the most important thing is not, is not, here's the business I'm going to hand over to you. I think I, it may not be the most important to him, but I'm pretty sure that his children are going to inherit a significant amount, if not all of his wealth along with their mamas. You know, but I get what he's saying. The most important thing is, you know, giving a child what they need. I do like seeing, I do like seeing him talk about Blue. Um, when he talks about her, 
uh, is so interesting. You could tell that he's, he seems like he's fascinated with this little human being who has like a bright personality. So good for you, Jay-Z. Um, your children are your greatest legacy. So I think that's, that's amazing. So hopefully you and Beyonce are doing what you need to do to the best of your ability. All right. Who's next? Oh, this, I thought that this was dope. We were talking about Atlanta. Um, Atlanta rapper, Young Thug and Gunna. You know them? But they aren't just using their fame and fortune to give back to their loved ones. In fact, on Friday afternoon, you know, we just woke up and went to the jail with the lawyer and, you know, DAs and on the prosecutors and, you know, the, the bond company, bonding companies and just got as many people as we can out by like 20 or 30 people. The rapper's label, YSL Records, shared this exclusive video showing the moment dozens of Fulton County inmates were released from the county jail. Watch this. They aren't just using. Now, I thought that this was amazing. So Gunna and Young Thug, they're both rappers. They basically posted bond for 30 Fulton County jail inmates being held for minor offenses. I thought that this was amazing. The longer news story shows that um, they did like a little barbecue and they were cooking out um, and feeding, you know, some of the people, their families and the people who came out 30 inmates who were being held for minor offenses. So they both thugger and uh, young thug, thugger, thugger and gunner. They basically went up to the Fulton County jail and they were with uh, lawyers and bondsmen. And again, they posted bail for 30 inmates. That's amazing. And these were for like low level crimes, you know, people who couldn't afford to, to bond out. I think that this is amazing. Of course, the comments were riddled with individuals saying that, you know, Young Thug has an out. Does his, is his album out already? It's either coming out soon or it's probably already out. Slime something or other too. Correct me in the comments, child. I, I be trying to keep up. Um, and they said, you know, he's doing it for clout, for promotion, for his album. Let's say that that's true. Is, is, <laughs> is it a bad thing? 30 people were released from jail people who couldn't afford to bail themselves out for minor offenses so even if he's doing it for clout isn't 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 the reward you know or you know what the result isn't it a good thing people going back home to their families and not sitting in jail right i don't like it's you're damned if you do you're damned if you don't you know people like to tell people what they should and shouldn't do with their money if he was made aware of this and he walked past the jail and didn't do nothing with all his ice on and his jewelry. Some people would be saying, that's a shame. He can afford to do it. He does it. Oh, they doing it for clout. It's, and you know what I like about Young Thug? When he does post certain things online, when he posts videos online, he's very, he's very well-spoken. He seems like he's like kind of easygoing. You know, I would be interested in like having a conversation with him just to kind of pick his brain. Uh, and he's very real, like, I don't care what y'all had to say about me online. Like, you know, his mother overcame cancer. You know, she's a cancer survivor. He said on one of his videos that his brother was getting surgery to restore his hearing. You know, he's in a position where he can afford to do these things for his family and his loved one coming from poverty, basically, right? As he uh, was growing up, he's, he talked about that as well. So it's kind of like, I like his whole attitude. You don't see him online ranting. Uh, and cussing people out not that I've seen and again if he's doing this to boost sales for his album the outcome is good 30 people who are in jail before he did this are out of jail and they could be back home with their families like I'm with young thug he don't, I don't care what y'all got to say let me know what you think I think it's a good thing and I think more stuff like this needs to be broadcasted um and yeah because at the end of the day, he's a very generous friend. Who did he gift? Was it Lil Baby? Who did he gift a car to? So I forgot who it was that came out of jail. And he bought them a car. He also gifted a couple of Atlanta rappers. Like, um, he bought T.I. like a Rolex and gave it to him. And I think he said he ordered one for Andre 3000 and Big Boy. He's a very generous young And he's a young guy. Very generous young man. <sighs> Who's next? Who is next, y'all, on the list? Let me, listen, I'm getting tired of Wendy Williams. Now, y'all know I love my auntie Wendy. But what is this, honey? This is according to Page Six Style. Wendy Williams steps out 
<laughs> in a wacky stuffed animal covered sweatshirt. I think she talked about this briefly on her show yesterday. Let me let me tell you something about Wendy Williams. I think Wendy Williams be calling the paparazzi on herself because she <laughs> she will post to her Instagram like the paparazzi caught me. You know she got a new little boyfriend or whatever. I didn't hear her talk about him at all this week so far. I forgot his name, Ball Guy. I think he's white, ball white guy. And this is her, this is somebody who she's dating. And um, there was a picture on her Instagram. Mind you, I didn't see it on, on, on any, any other media outlet but on her Instagram. I, th- I think Wendy Williams has somebody come and take a picture of her. And she posted on her Instagram. It's like, Wendy, girl, Wendy. But you know what? She's an OG. She can get away with that. In my opinion, she can get away with that. So, you know, the talk show host, 56, stepped out in NYC on Tuesday wearing an eye-catching blue crew neck sweatshirt with a variety of stuffed animals attached around the neckline. This thing is tacky. And she... (laughs) They said... The article said it looks like an arts and crafts project because this is supposed to be mimicking what it is. I think it's a Louis Vuitton... Yeah, Louis Vuitton $7,450 puppet sweater. This is ugly. This is so ugly. Who seven thousand dollars for something like this? I think she said that. I think she said it was a knockoff. I don't remember. But Wendy, I'm gonna need you to cut this out. Wendy is living her best life. Is it me? Have you guys been keeping up with her and watching her? She just has a newfound like I don't know a new leash on life. I don't know. All right, what else? What else is left? Let me see. I want to get to this DMX memorial. Should I just go there? Yeah, I think I think we should just go to the DMX memorial. Lord have mercy. So DMX oh, went home to be with the Most High, right? And I don't know about you guys, but I am I'm glad. I'm glad that he is at peace and he is resting. Oh, where do I begin? Okay, so on Friday, D, okay, DMX went to the upper room. Certain words I can't say. I'm not being insensitive. DMX went to the upper room on April 9th of this year, this month, right? And his memorial service was this past Friday. And his um, actual funeral service was on Sunday. So when Swiss Beats, or was it Saturday? Anyway, so when Swiss Beats at the Barclays Center, they did a memorial um, they were riding around, you know, with his casket on a monster truck. He was riding through Brooklyn. He rode through Yonkers. Um, everybody was out, you know, the Rough Riders motorcycle clubs. Everybody was out with their bikes. You know, it was just so much love and support, right? And the memorial was at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Kanye West Choir um, performed. To my understanding, understanding Kanye hasn't come out and confirmed this, but Kanye West was a part of planning this memorial service because his choir was there. Uh, a lot of you know, a couple people spoke. Nas spoke. Drag on, oh my God, who is like DMX's like son slash little brother who he loved. He always talked about. Drag on was there. Uh, the Rough Rider family is there, who is blood related to Swiss Beats. You see Swiss Beats on stage. Um, his kids were there. His daughter gave a beautiful, you know, performance. She kind of redid his song, uh, Slippin', and she put it in her own words. Um, who else was there? Eve, because she was part of the Rough Rider family. You know, she was there. Styles and Jada Kiss, they were there. Um, you know, sharing some little, some little stories and things like that. And I said, you know, Kanye West choir did, did a good job. His, I, I, I've been rocking with his choir for a minute. I think Kanye, yeah, you know, something about the energy of the service wasn't really, it was a little unsettling to me. I don't know if it was the colors. I don't know if it was, it was real, like, I don't know. It was something. It was something off. What Swiss Beats said to close out the memorial service, I didn't care for. Okay? I understand part of grieving, you get angry. 
But I feel like if you have an issue with somebody as it pertains to the memorial service or somebody that is close to the departed, I don't feel like you should get on stage at anybody's memorial and indirectly throw daggers at people. I just, it's, 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 it's just so lowbrow in my opinion. But again, I can understand that him grieving the loss of, of someone who's like a brother to him, him being upset. So when I first saw this, I just thought that I said to myself, he's out of order. And a lot of times, in my opinion, a lot of people equate being rude and tacky with quote, keeping it real. I don't. And people were, some people were saying like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He was keeping it real. And I know that there's like a herd mentality that sometimes people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just automatically go along. They could genuinely feel that way. I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't going along with what a majority of the crowd was saying. There were some things that were, that he said, okay, although they are true, I just feel like timing and the way that you do things makes a difference. So what am I talking about? I'm pretty sure everybody has seen this by now, but if not, I'm going to take it from the top. Most I want to give love to the Simmons family, DMX kids, and everybody that love my brother very dearly. Words can't describe our loss, but our gain is heavy as well because we got a real serious person upstairs that's looking down on us and that's gonna guide us through our journey. He keep popping up on me. He started the show late today. He already up there acting up. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I just love, I just, the only part is like, you know, I just wish all these people showed up for him when he was here. You know what I'm saying? You got thousands of people claiming who they are on tickets and things like that. This man needed everybody. He also want to give love to the Simmons family. He didn't need everybody when he's not here. He needed everybody when he was here. You understand? So we got to learn how to celebrate each other while we're here. I don't want y'all to show up to my shit when I'm gone. Unless you was showing up while I was here. I want to be sent off with the same love that I had when you were standing next to me. The things that I'm witnessing from my brother's passing, it's a big educational, it was a big educational thing for me to learn. I'm glad that I got to see it at this age. A lot of people ain't your friends. A lot of people ain't your family. And I need everybody to do a will. You have to do your will. You do not want strangers, bloodsuckers, handling your business when you're not here. You want the ones that you love. You didn't need everybody when he's not here. Handling your business. But I'm going to make sure my brother's straight. I'm going to make sure my brother's family's straight, my brother's kids are straight, and everybody in here better do the same as well. Because this is not a fashion show. This is not a performance. This is a real life day to day. And I love everybody that really had love for my brother because when you see me, you see him. Stop! DMX is great. on earth was Swiss Beats talking about? What, what, what are you talking about when you see, when we see Swiss Beats, we see DMX? Nah, 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 nah. Excuse me? I, we associate the two of you, of course, but when we see, in my opinion, when I see DMX, I see DMX. When I see Swiss Beats, I see Swiss Beats. Everybody is, I tell you, the man, y'all, some people got to kill their ego. And again, I understand that he is probably in the grieving process and he's at the point where he's angry. But here's the thing. Number one, why are you, t why are you making indirect statement? Nobody knows who you're talking about. We don't need to know that whatever's happening behind the scenes that should stay behind the scenes. 
Swiss Beats has been in the music business since he was, what, 14, 16, something like that. Again, the founders of Rough White Riders, D, Wa, and Siobhan, those are his uncles and his aunt. So you don't understand how business is to be conducted? The music business is about music, but it's majority business. So what I'm saying, I'm saying all that to say, you couldn't save this conversation to approach or confront the person that you're talking about face to face. First of all, I don't like that. There's nothing keeping it real about that. You make it indirect comments. You got an issue with somebody, say it to their face, not at his memorial service. I'm going to make sure that my brother kids are straight. Why are you going to make sure that they're straight now? Why are you beating your chest and, and letting the whole world, people who are watching this, know, oh, Swiss Beats is going to make sure that, that DMX's kids are straight. God is going to make sure that his kids is all right. Just like God made sure that DMX was all right, regardless of what people think. This, 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 this self-righteous attitude that some of these people have is disgusting this ain't a performance this ain't a fashion show who said it was you to me this is how this memorial service it was was it friday or saturday i think it was saturday i was watching it in real time i don't remember if it was saturday or not or friday but this 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 self-righteous you just ruined the whole vibe for me it was a little cringy because sometimes the sound wasn't working or whatever, but the choir, they did, they did very, very well. And people were talking and they showed the video of when DMX was on the roller coaster with his daughter and his daughter was screaming. He's just like, daddy's here. I'm here, you know? And here you come with your self-righteous attitude. I'm gonna make sure my brother's kids are straight. People, you know, make sure you have a will so that blood suckers are not, that was so, that, it ticked me off. And I said, see, Swiss Beats ain't doing nothing but stirring up strife. And I think I posted that on my YouTube community tab. Sometimes when you say things, you don't realize what type of energy you conjuring up. Or maybe you just don't care. Why are you going to make sure that his kids are straight? If you his brother, Mr. Big Bad Almighty, wouldn't you be doing that already? See, people want acknowledgement. They always want to let the world know what they're doing. Why don't you bless people in private so God can bless you in public? Why you got to, why, what is all of this? I, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take care of. Be careful. Because God forbid you end up in a position where you can't even take care of your own kids. You making a promise in front of the whole world. Did you consult with God about this? I'm just saying. I'm just saying, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm doing too much, but that's how I feel. So then Sunday was his actual funeral service at a church in Brooklyn, CCC. And I'm going to tell you something right now, pastor Bernard. Hey, Bernard. Okay. Pastor Bernard was ready for everybody to get up out his church. I am not even going to go through some of the, some of the, just some of the, the chaos that took place at the funeral. I'm going to be honest. I was laughing at a lot of stuff, but one thing I did not laugh at. Now I want to say this minister Farrakhan. I was pleasantly surprised that he gave a beautiful talk at DMX's funeral. I was not expecting that. I kept saying, where's Tashira? Where's Tashira? Nobody mentioned it to Shira. The first person to mention to Tashira Simmons, who was DMX's ex-wife, was Minister Farrakhan. And then we saw the beautiful Tashira get up on stage and share her thoughts on her ex-husband, who was her best friend, okay? And one thing that I liked, she went on after... Most of the of the clownery, you know, Rough Riders, they went up there again. Swiss Beats did go up there and he basically said that he was very he's very protective of his brother. He loves his brother. So it's kind. I think he kind of realized if somebody didn't talk to him that he was doing too much at the memorial the day before. And certain things it was were uncalled for the way he said it. I'm not taking away from how he feels. I'm not doing that. But there's a time and a place. There's decency and order when it comes to doing stuff. And I love the fact that. Tashira prayed before she spoke. She got up and she said, you know what? Let me pray and ask God to word my mouth and let my words flow 
like water. Okay. When she got up there. As far as the Rough Riders family, it was nothing but self-promotion. Uh, 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 D, I think it was. That's um, uh, Swiss B's uncle, one of the founders of, you know, Rough Riders. D, he was up there. I don't know if he was under the influence. He was talking about, oh, uh, what's, what's your, what's, What's DMX's youngest child name? And it, it, they, he brought his own son up there who started rapping. You know, they were handing out little, uh, look like bulletproof vests, but they were biker jackets. It was just a hot mess. And I think that the Rough Riders family was up there way too long. D was talking way too long. He had more to say than anybody. And I'm wondering, like, okay, is this who Swiss Beats was talking about? Because, like, you know. Even though that's his uncle, I mean, does, does he have shade? We don't even know. And honestly, I don't even care. But a lot of people were wondering who you're talking about. So it just takes away from memorializing DMX. Another thing that Swiss Beats said at the memorial at the Barclays Center, he needed all of these people. Where was all the where were all you people when he was here? You know, give him his flowers. Will y'all stop saying that? When y'all start saying give people their flowers, you don't know what other people are going through, number one. You don't know if God removes people from people for a greater purpose. Just stop with that already. S just please. Just because you were there with him, maybe, you know, you were closer to him, you had more access to him, doesn't make you any better than anybody else. I just, I, I'm telling you, the self-righteousness is just so, it's so grotesque. Anyway, let's see what Sister Sh Tashira had to say. This is a little clip of her uplifting her sister, Desiree, who is DMX's fiance. She's also the mother to Exodus, who is DMX's youngest child. Come on, Sister Tashira, you know, uplift. Uplift, sis. I am going to recognize Desiree because from day one, real women do real things. I'm a real woman, and I'm a woman of God. That woman is a woman of God. She's in training, she's in the work, she ain't perfect, but she love that man. And that's why I love you. You see what I mean? So when she comes up, Okay, I thought that was beautiful, you know, and I don't know if people were confused. Uh, you know, you re I like to read the comments of certain things or whatever. And um, when this first happened, again, this is at the funeral that took place on Sunday at the church in Brooklyn and um, Pastor Bernard's church, child. And Tashira is... You know, Tashira's a real one. I was I was waiting for Tashira to speak because I hadn't seen her, and I'm like, when is she gonna talk? So she doesn't have an issue with Desiree. Like I think I don't know if people are aware, but they they're cool. And I remember uh, 2018, either 2017, 20 I don't know, three four years ago, however long ago it was, a few years ago, uh, DMX was facing jail time, and Tashira. And Desiree both wrote a letter to the judge, you know, just kind of vouching for, for X, you know, talking about how he is there for his kids, you know, what he's done for the community, yada, yada. So they don't have any beef. So I don't know. I guess I don't I guess people weren't aware of that or whatever. But I thought that this was beautiful um, to share up there in Hawaii. OK, but she gave a beautiful you know, speech about, you know, when she met him and how they were towards each other and what he taught her and how she, how DMX basically opened up her interests and love for God. You know, she was raised Muslim. So I, I can only imagine what those conversations were like. And they are best friends. You know, they, she's been through a lot, um, but she loved, she loved DMX, um, 
she loved him. She always says that he has a heart of gold. I remember when they were on couples therapy. Y'all remember remember that? I wonder what Dr. Jen has to say. Um, a lot of people were saying they didn't like how they were painting DMX's mom as this, you know, involved mother. I'm staying away from that. Um, DMX has talked about countless of times the relationship that he had with his mother. Now, he said that his father was also there. I've never seen his father. So I was a little bit taken aback by that. But DMX made it clear that he's reconciled with his mom. So I think that people should, you know, leave that alone. He's made peace with his with his mother. Now, moving along, uh, toward the end, stuff got crazy, okay? Now, I sat through this entire fume. It was about four hours and some change. Shot out to BET. There were no commercials. Um, this was almost as long as uh, Aretha's fume. So what I did was I was recording majority of this on my DVR. So I was kind of like listening, and then um, I heard a man, there was a guy singing, and then the music was playing after, you know, soft piano was playing after he was singing. So I said, I wonder if they're getting ready to wrap it up. All of a sudden, this guy comes on stage and I'm standing in front of the TV and I'm frozen. So then I started rewinding and I was so confused for like a minute or two, like maybe a minute, less than a minute. Then I rewind and I said, you know what? I got to record this, record it on my phone. I posted it to my Instagram so you guys can get the entire, you know, of what happened, the entirety of what happened. So here we are. Oh my God. I'm gonna try to turn it up. I told her old best friend, and we've been on the road with him for the last couple of years. And this album would have not happened if we were not around. If we did not suffer through the pandemic and take Earl Simmons out of his house, drive a RV down south, and complete this album. I've been his friend for 20 years. 20 years I've been his friend. And I've been around him. I'm not an industry dude. And we got similar stories. Just like him with his grandmother. I have a grandmother that raised me and I love my grandmother. I have a dog. I have, I have similar stories. We, we, we both were in institutions when we were young. And I want to give you a story to how our lives parallel and cross each other. Tashira said something here tonight that struck me and I never knew it. She said that she seen X steal a, a purse or a pocketbook. That's the same thing I did as an adolescent when I was about nine to 10 years old. And that put me in the group home in Yonkers. That's how I ended up in Yonkers. So I knew Earl Simmons since 89. And he was seven years my senior. But I was a, I was a fan of his before he even realized it because he was a local hero in the music industry, I mean, in the music scene as an underground artist. He did shows at School 12 and in Commerce, and the group home was right next door to Commerce. And I'm going to tell you something else. This last year of my life, all the time I know Earl, I never said this to him. But I told him a story that happened to me, and he was a part of that story. He was a part of that story. And my name is Jungle, by the way. So I'm, so I'm letting y'all know for the ones that don't know me. All right. Yeah, here's what I'm going to do, brother. Brother, my brother. Over here. Over here. Yeah. Over here, my brother. First of all, first of all, no, 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 no. There's order. There's respect. There is, there is, you violated order. There, there, there you violated respect. respect. There is respect. All right. Respect, but you disrespected my house. This is, you disrespected I, my I, I, house. You telling me? Regardless of how good you say, what you got to say is, you disrespected my house. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my brother. It's always something going on at a black feud. Now, I can I can giggle at this now, but when I first saw this, like I said, I was watching this feud in real time. I was so confused. And and Pastor was ready to give the benediction. And he started right after that, he started praying for Jungle. And he said, you know, that brother felt like he had something to say. And then after that, he said, are you guys, do you guys, we're, now it's time for the benediction. As you, you can hear music playing because right before Jungle came up, I don't remember the guy, the gentleman's name, but he sang a song. 
he was singing a song. So I'm thinking that the benediction was supposed to take place after that man sang the song, but Jungle took it upon himself to get up on stage. <sighs> he said that y'all cut me out the program. Now, I don't know if that means he was on the program and they didn't get to his speech, but cut me out the program. He might not have been on the program at all. Now, this funeral at the church was invite only. So he was invited. Here's the thing. The pastor said something afterwards. You know, he said, you know, I'm glad that this didn't happen B.C. And that means before Christ. He said, because I wasn't always a pastor. See, this is what I mean about people and their freaking egos. You, he said, you disrespected my house. And a lot of people are like, well, that's not your house. Yes, it is. Let's, let's, let's just talk, y'all. These churches belong to these pastors and the people. The house doesn't belong to God. Yes, you welcome the presence of the Lord. God ain't in no, build, no man-made buildings. Okay, y'all know that. Y'all paper Bible say, folks, y'all know that. There's a scripture that says so. What book and chapter? I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure you do. God does not dwell in in buildings built by man. Okay? Correct me. Give me the ch book, chapter, and verse. I know, I know that's in the Bible book. I saw it. I know it. And I learned it when I was little. Right? So when he says you disrespected my house, technically, yes, it is the pastor's house. Like, let's keep it a buck. I understand what people mean figuratively. No, that's God's house. But listen. The people are the ones that tithe, pay tithes and offerings, you know, keep the building afloat. The pastor is the one that runs. It's his house. It's a, it's, it's a tangible item. It's a material thing. Yes, they welcome the presence of God. Yes. But God don't dwell there. We are the church. But that's a whole nother story. So I didn't take offense to that. I know some people took offense to that when the pastor said that. I was more so offended by when he was like, okay, you said a prayer for him. He was very polite, brother. You know, there's order. Okay. You know, but then you had to, you had to keep going, huh? Passa, passa. Hey, Bernard, you had to keep going, right? Thank God this was, you know, this is BC. Cause I wasn't, what is that supposed to mean? See, I don't, <sighs> anyway, jungle, you, you were out of order, bro. Like I, I get it. You know, that's your mans in them. I get it. Who knows? This could have been who Swiss Beats was talking about, but see, I, let me go back to my original point. Uh, when ego's involved and you stir up strife. I'm not blaming Swiss Beats for this, but I'm just saying the energy of strife was stirred up the day before. The nonsense was stirred up the day before. So it just spilled over into another day. And I put on my community feed, Swiss Beats just stirred up strife. Just watch. That was the day of the memorial service. And then look what happens the day of the funeral. This is not the only thing that happened that was a bit much. It was just, it was just ridiculous. But this was so awkward. And this is how the show closed out because the pastor then read the benediction and that was it. If you, um, I was watching it on BET, the network on, on TV, and I know they were streaming it on, uh, BET on the YouTube page. But I think that if you go back now and watch it, I think this part is cut out. I think they cut this part out because some people were like, this was on, this was, wait, they played this part on BET? Because again, it was it was live, so they didn't cut the cameras. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that I rewinded the uh, the DVR in real time and recorded this because everybody was posting like snippets. I wanted to post the whole thing, and um, you're welcome, by the way. Anyway, yeah, it's jungle. This wasn't it wasn't necessary. And to be honest with you, um, Lord only knows where you were going. See. You could tell when he grabbed the mic, he was all over the place. There was no order in what it is that he had to say because he felt like I was cut out the program. So he led with anger, strife, and confusion. See what I'm saying? You lead with your emotions. You don't think. You don't ask God to word your mouth. You don't take your time. You don't just sit this one out. Why you ain't just sit this one out? Why does everybody, I got something to say. If you spent this much time with X, what difference does it make that the audience knows who you are? Is the audience, the star of the show, or the most important? Are we memorial memorializing the audience? Or are we memorializing the departed? 
if you spent your last days with somebody or, you know what I'm saying, your last months with somebody not knowing that they were going to be going up yonder, I don't I don't feel I need to prove anything to anybody. Though uh, my name is Jungle, for those of you who don't know, why wouldn't they know you if you were his best friend for 20 years since 1989? No disrespect, but 1989 to 2021, is that 20 years? Or he said 30 years. Whatever. I'm just being petty. But I'm just saying. Oh, that's 32? Okay, well, I stand corrected. I sat here and did it. He says he knew him since 1989. He said 30 years or 20 years. I don't, anyway, who cares? I don't know. That's what I get for being petty. See? Look, being foolish. Anyway, I understand that 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 jungle is emotional and DMX is his brother. He knew him for a long time. But he wasn't really he wasn't really going anywhere with the story. And I'm glad that Passa Bernard stopped him before he further embarrassed himself. Again, I do agree that there's decency and order with anything. And it's not just because it's a church. No, there's decency and order in, 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 there should be decency and order in anything. And I do feel that he was being disrespectful. His children were sitting in the audience. DMX's children were sitting right in the front, the few first few rows right there. So you're doing this in front of the children to say what? And then when the pastor said, excuse me, brother, excuse me, brother, first of all, there's decency and order. Why are you arguing with him? Y'all cut me out the program. Everybody is worried about themselves. <sighs> Lord, when would people learn? Well, Royal B, I'm, Royal B, well, Royal family, that's all I got. Good grief, an hour and 41 minutes. Listen, if you lasted this long, God bless you and may God keep you. And I want to say thank you. <laughs> all jokes aside, glad to be back. Shout out to everybody who joined the stream on Twitch. Make sure you are following me on Twitch. She underscore Royal B on Twitch. If you don't have the app, you can download the app from your Google Play Store or your Apple App Store or whatever it's called on, on, on iPhone. It is free. Uh, you don't have to pay to download Twitch. And whenever I um, record the videos, I stream live on Twitch. Then I upload them to YouTube, let them process and all that stuff. And then it'll be up at a later time on YouTube. So YouTubers, this is not live. This is pre-recorded, but the chat is going to be live so you can comment in real time. It's good to be back. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can get this review out for y'all today. Are you guys watching Couples Retreat? I'm already exhausted. So I am going to jump on that review and then we could just like talk about it so drop down in the comments share your thoughts share the video make sure you like before you leave if you didn't already do so um hit the subscribe button if you want to be and click the notification bell if you want to be notified every time i upload new content so yeah this wasn't that bad this was mad long though but not too bad you know for my uh <laughs> my welcome back party that i gave myself all right, Royal Family, I'm signing off. This has been long enough. I love you for watching. And as always, until next time, peace.